stamping an emphatic end to a legal case that drew the attention of the international art world, a federal judge on Tuesday ruled that a painting owned by a Canadian man is not the work of famous artist Peter Doig. Doig, whose paintings sell for millions of dollars, absolutely did not paint the disputed work, U. S. District Judge Gary Fien Ehrman said, adding that the testimony and documents presented at a seven-day trial conclusively show the artist did not paint the desert scene in 1976. The judge said there was massive evidence that showed it was impossible for Doig to have painted the work. Fien Ehrman also ruled that the evidence shows another man with a similar name, Peter Edward Doig, a now-deceased carpenter who dabbled in painting, was the creator of the painting. Doig adamantly maintained he did not paint the work, and based on the narrative that developed about its origins in an art program at an Ontario Correctional Center, could not have created it. If authenticated as a work of Doig, the painting may have been worth more than six million dollars. Now, it may be worth only thousands, although that remains unknown. The ruling was a conclusive victory for Doig and a resounding decision against the plaintiffs, a Canadian correctional officer who said he bought the artwork for $100, and a Chicago art gallery owner who was hired to market and sell the work. Doig, who did not attend a hearing in Chicago but listened by a teleconference, issued a statement after the hearing that said in part, Today's verdict is the long overdue vindication of what I have said from the beginning four years ago, a young talented artist named P. Edward Doig painted this work, I did not. Thankfully, justice prevailed, but it was way too long in coming. That a living artist has to defend the authorship of his own work should never have come to pass. The plaintiffs said they were disappointed in the ruling, with gallery owner Peter Bartlow still convinced the work was done by Doig. Painting owner Robert Fletcher said his goal was more about the truth than the money. I think anyone in my shoes would have done what I did, Fletcher said. For years, Fletcher had the painting in his home before he was told it may be the work of Doig and worth a fortune. I love it, love it, Fletcher said. It's something I've always treasured. The painting, which was displayed on an easel at the side of the courtroom during the hearing, was packed into a cardboard box and returned to a courtroom vault. Bartlow said he plans to retrieve it Wednesday, but its future is unclear. The value is something that comes next, Bartlow said. We can't say right now. Fletcher and Bartlow filed suit in 2013 after Bartlow tried to market and sell the work, and they sought $7.9 million in damages if the painting was authenticated as a Doig work. The judge, however, ruled Doig was completely within his rights to stop the sale of the painting if it was being billed as his work. He awarded no damages to Fletcher and Bartlow. Doig is known for what the Art Institute of Chicago calls dreamlike paintings, influenced by the likes of Edward Munch, that combine a hallucinatory palette with expressive brushwork. His paintings have been showcased in top art galleries across the world, including the Art Institute, which has two of his paintings in its permanent collection. In the past decade, two of his works sold for more than $10 million. Fien Ehrman said the testimony of Doig and the artist's mother, combined with high school yearbook photos and school records, proved Doig was not incarcerated in 1976 at the Thunder Bay Correctional Center, where Fletcher said he saw the work created. Instead, the judge said, documents and testimony from the sister of Doige the carpenter, plus examination of the signature on the work 1976 Pete Doige proved that man painted the scene. Doige testified that he has never been to Thunder Bay, and at the time the painting was created he had completed only sketches. If I had made this painting at the age of 16 or 17, I'd have been immensely proud of it, Doige said, according to a court transcript provided by his lawyers. I'm not going to create my own forgery, a fake of my own work. I could get in trouble for that. It would have been much easier for me to have said right at the beginning, yes, I did it. Go away. Why would I do that? I'd be breaking the law. Testimony also focused on the similarities in style of the disputed work and authenticated works by Doig. But the judge said those were purely coincidental and that the colors, 
shapes and western style of the painting were common enough that it could not be linked only to Doig. He quoted testimony from Richard Schiff, an art professor at the University of Texas, who said during the trial that if you're looking for coincidences between two works of art, you're going to find coincidences. Doig testified that while he had no problem with the art, he believed it to be wrong to be associated with a painting he steadfastly denied doing. An artist, the judge said, is well within his rights to ensure that art he did not create is not sold under his name.